everyone, we have a Chanel video again today. This is the Byzantine, well, it's not Byzantine, it's Byzance collection. Uh, today we are looking at the Crystal Quad. It is 328. I did a video, could have been yesterday, could have been a couple days ago. 318 Venetian. Um, the shades in here are described as a light pink, a mauve, a taupe, and a light blue. Similar to the Venetian, that quote white shade that you see in there has a shift to it. I'm gonna have the shades go up right now. That's the, the swatches. Um, I think this crystal one is going to be my favorite. I don't know. I only have Venetian and the crystal right now. I have gone back and forth on whether or not to get the Baroque. That is the one um, with the antique gold, emerald green, and pearl white. Those three shades, a home run. The fact that there's a ruby red in there though, I'll never use that shade, <laughs> ever. Um, and then the other one, which is 308, which is the Imperial, that has a yellow orange, a terracotta pink, a dark purple, and a silvery pink yellow. I'm not gonna pick that one up, guys. I'm trying to be more of a conscientious, discerning uh, shopper, buyer, whatever you wanna say. Definitely picking up uh, you know, all the, the collections, but I might not pick up the entire collection. Uh, for example, the Dior Fall sweater embossed. I am not planning to pick that up. I was gonna get it, but you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't really like it. <laughs> and and I asked folks over on uh, Patreon, uh, where you know I have more like one-on-one -on -one conversations with everybody. And it, by the way, if you're interested in doing that, if you want like specific advice on you know what colors you should wear, or even if you want like a there's different options. I'm actually considering like doing a yearly membership for folks that want like actual makeup tutorials, if that's something you want over there. Uh, but I have like one-on-one -on -one conversations over there. And I asked about the Dior collection and everyone was like, yeah, we don't really, no, <laughs> no. So unless I get overwhelming like response from this or other, uh, you know, uh, questions, I don't, I just, I don't think I'm going to get it. Uh, but anyway, so this is on sale at Chanel Boutique's uh, Harrods, am I missing something? Selfridges, somewhere else, not positive. Um, and I don't know if this is gonna be in uh, stores. I think it is, I think it's at other retailers, but like eventually, but um, I don't have I don't have clarification on that yet. So I'll let you know when I know, $70. And of course, as I said, the special packaging, as I showed you the shades, the hammered metal nature of the uh, quad is based on Gabrielle uh, Chanel's jewelry. She had these hammered gold cuffs. Now I'm sure her cuffs were real gold. This is a plastic hammered gold. Uh, and you know, people have asked, does it look cheap? I don't think it looks cheap. Does it look ultra luxe? No. Uh, but I don't know if I would want it to be, like it's plastic, I mean. But I don't know if I would want it to be like metal because then it might be too heavy. So I haven't really figured out my, my stance on that, but I don't think it looks cheap. I do like the fact that frankly, Chanel did something a little bit different. You know, I like the fact that it's not just the pure black. And on the uh, case, you'll see that it has the gold CCs instead of the, the normal uh, white CCs on the front, which I, I, you know, I like that little touch to, to lend into the inside of, of the packaging. Um, all right, so like I said, we're gonna do this one today. We're gonna do a look with this one. Um, I really think this is going to be my favorite. We're about to find out. I am using some very old Chanel brushes. In my other Chanel video, I talked about the fact that um, that uh, I bought this brush and this entire set and the story behind how I bought it. You have to go look at the other video, watch the other video to hear the story. But this brush is like 28 years old and you can tell it's an old brush. But this is how Chanel used to make their brushes. This is a wood handle. There's like a gold pinched ferrule and then natural hair brush. Um, and I used to be a, a Chanel makeup artist long, long time ago. Uh, all right, so we're gonna take the lightest shade here. You know what, let's actually take this, let's take the shade, the shade, which I think is described as a move. Let's try the move and see what it does. Um, I felt like the shades in the other uh, palette in the Venetian were pigmented. I don't think they're. I don't think they're strongly pigmented, but I don't think they were. Um, I don't think they had weak pigment. I just think it was like more of a a soft Chanel kind of look. You know what I mean? I don't think that they were rich in tone. I think you know these are more 
like of a soft, if I had to compare it to anything to do with uh, intensity, I'd say this is more of a Play to Po kind of, you know, compared to the, like the new releases than a YSL. That's if you're basing it on that. Softer, uh, maybe, you know, depending on how you look at things, elegant, not that the E Saint Laurent's aren't elegant. I love the E Saint Laurent's. Don't come for me. I'm just saying, I think, you know, it's a, it's a different aesthetic. I think the E Saint Laurent's are a little more bold or they can be a little more bold and dramatic. Um, whereas the clay to pose and these at least that I've used so far are a softer, more everyday kind of look. And don't get me wrong, I mean, that's why I picked them up. I think they'll work well for everything. And you can mix them with other, with other palettes. There's, you know, different ways to do this. Now, what I did with the other one is I used that uh, shifting shade on the inner corner and sort of in the brow. Today, I'm going to use that on the eye. So I'm going to take the other shade, what they're calling this, what did they call it? Light pink shade. And I'm going to use that just on the outer corner very lightly to go over and I'm going to use it on the inner part of my eye. That's a very, very soft shade. It has pigment, but honestly, it doesn't show up. It's a very light pink. Um, it actually will probably show up better on somebody who has a deeper skin tone because it'll be a contrast. On me, it almost looks like my skin tone. Definitely has a shade, but it's very, very light. Uh, and I'm also going to take that and use it up into the brow just to kind of like pull it out. As you can see, I'm using, I'm not using a lot of it, but it's also that the shade is just a very light shade of peach pink, light pink. All right. Now let's, let's do the brown first and then the, uh, the, uh, light blue on the lid. So I'm going to take this, this, um, shade that they're calling taupe. I think it looks brown, but they're they're calling it taupe. So let's let's go with taupe. Just deepening out the outer corner. I am pulling in my eye a little. Try not to pull at your eye, <laughs> even though I do what I say, not as I do. Um, you know, I'm a little bit older and skin laxity. Uh, I'm just pulling it to try to create a a tighter canvas, if you will. But the less you pull on your eye over time. Um, the less you'll have that problem, at least hopefully. Yeah, I guess it is a more of a taupe. It's got a cooler tone. As I've been doing this, hopefully I've kept, or at least I had the uh, swatches up for a little bit. Yeah, it definitely has a a cooler vibe. It's not it's not as uh, brown as the one in the um, Venetian. Okay, I really like that color story. Interesting, because I. Uh, I do, it's funny, the, a lot of the time I do like the warmer, like almost goldy orangey kind of um, color stories because it brings out the blue in my eyes, but I don't know, of late, I'm not sure exactly why, but I've been liking like a cooler, like the store dolls in the, in the East St. Lawrence, definitely a cool tone, almost like soft cashmere kind of thing. And I've really liked that one. And I've just sort of been drawn a little bit, I don't know, lately to cooler tones. Again, I am in natural light, so you should be able to see the color story as it truly, well, as, as well as the camera can interpret it. All right, now I'm going to take that um, shifting shade. The, Chanel, I haven't seen anything from Chanel calling it a duochrome, um, but again, I haven't seen officially uh, anything from Chanel in the United States, so maybe they will come out and say that here. Kind of pressing it in first. Oh, that's very pretty. Yeah, it's definitely a light blue. It changes the look quite a bit from a taupey little bit pink to a, you know, almost icy blue. Now this one doesn't seem as impactful, like it doesn't seem as opalescent um, as the uh, green, white green in the Venetian. I'm also going to take my finger because I always like to see the difference between that and like a brush. Yeah, I think you actually get more impact with your finger. That's interesting. I mean, that that sometimes is the case. That's why I always try different techniques with makeup. You know, try brushes, try your finger, try a sponge, like, you know, different, play around with it. That's kind of the point. 
Now that's actually very pretty and very elegant while also being kind of sparkly. <laughs> All right, that's grayer than I thought it was interesting. It's grayer than I thought it was gonna be. All right, so let me put on um, a little bit of uh, liner. I think today I'm gonna pick, been using, I'm gonna use the Chanel liners um, to keep in the Chanel mode, but I think I'm gonna try to find a gray that, that might work. Back with some mascara and a little bit here for how did I get it on my cheek? That I do not know. Uh, so I really do like this look. I think it's elegant. I think it's cooler than I thought it was be. It's going to be. It's like a grayish blue on me. That's that's kind of how it goes. And I think you can see by putting that whatever they're calling it shifting shade all over the eye that it created a more dramatic effect. When I used it in the Venetian, that green to white, I used it on the inner corner and the brow, so it's not as impactful there. And so that looked like a softer look. This, I think, looks like a very soft look until you take that shifting shade, whatever shade it is. Um, if you use that as the primary color on the lid, you're gonna get more of that. It's just like a sparkly, shimmery shade. I think it looks beautiful, but Again, it depends on what you're, you know, looking for from the from the quad. Um, I think this is my favorite of the two, but I haven't really played around with that white green shade that's in the Venetian, like all over the eye. And I want to see what it looks like all over the eye. I also want to see what it looks like over like a deep, like almost like a black shade, you know, like a base, because I think that might be really interesting. Um, so hopefully I have a chance to do that for all of you. But yeah, I, I really like this look. I think it's beautiful. I think it's um, elegant and dramatic at the same time. I think this is more, what I created today, I think is more of like an evening. That would be for me anyway. I ended up using the um, eyeliner in the gray scintillant. Probably not even close, but I did my best, um, which is the Precision Eye Definer. Um, and these are more of like the coal pencils that, uh, that Chanel has. They are also like transfer proof if you let them sit for a while, but they're not waterproof like the other ones that, that I use. So overall, I think the packaging is creative and interesting. I like the hammered nature of the, of the metal. Um, it is plastic. It is not metal on the inside. I like the fact that the gold on the outside picks up on that. I think the color story is interesting. Of both of them, I think the shifting shade, whatever that is, uh, is the most interesting of all the shades. I think the other shades that are in here are neutrals, which is frankly why I picked them, because I, I do, I think that's what these are. These are like the three neutrals. In this one, they're cool toned. In the other one, the Venetian, and they're warm toned. Uh, I want to play around with the, 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 shifting shades a little bit more to understand how they work. I think the formula is good. I think the formula is Chanel, except for this shifting shade, which is a little bit different for Chanel. Like that's not a typical, they don't usually do that. So I do actually love that and love the fact that Chanel did something a little bit different. Um, but pure formula, I still prefer the E Saint Laurent's and the Clé de Pose for different reasons. Um, how the product fits in with all that, I need to play around with that a little bit more, but that's a different, I feel like that one, if I had to sum up, the E Saint Laurent's are the ones that are like the all around best, can be basic, can be dramatic, have the capacity to do that with a shimmer shade. The Clé de Peau has the best creamy, you're looking for something that is gonna last all day, literally all day, uh, and is a soft, quiet luxury look. The Prada is more creative, very lightweight, very lightweight formula on the shadow, like the shadows. They are very pigmented um, and have a beautiful look to them, but the soft matte in there does fade. Now that's not necessarily bad because that's the pop of color, but if you're buying it for the pop of color, that's the shade that kind of fades off, I think because it is that soft matte, so just to be aware. And then this one, this seems to be like a, a good Chanel formula. It's not the Chanel, in my opinion, it's not the Chanel formula of old. It's not the one that I had, and I'm gonna be pulling out actually pretty soon in a video um, from 20 years ago. But I do think it's a very good formula, and I really am enjoying this, the shifting shade in both of them. For $70 with the limited edition packaging, if you're somebody who likes Chanel and you're somebody who collects limited edition Chanel shadows, then this is a no-brainer. 
But I'd say at the moment, it really does depend on, you know, all those factors that I just mentioned. I'll have, you know, review more videos coming up soon about like rankings and all that good stuff, but this was a first impression. So I'd really be interested if, if you're picking up any of this collection, if you're interested in any of it, are there other quads that I mentioned in the other video what the other quads are in this collection? Love to hear your thoughts. Um, and uh, please put any questions or anything you want to talk about in the, in the uh, comment section below. So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye.